Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope uh, everybody is having a good day. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So it's quite exciting uh, for me and a little bit um, nerve wracking. I'm very glad, hopefully, that my armpits are out of shot uh, because you, they may be sweat may uh, appear at some point today. <coughs> um, but um, tired in San Diego. Hello, Daniel. How are you? Um, I guess Hannah has asked me to do this, uh, and I, I actually said I'm just going to talk for a bit. Um, one of my, uh, I guess, one of my things that I do when talking, perhaps sometimes, is talk too much. But listen, I'm going to try and get through as much as I can, uh, um, and not waffle on too much. And then um, uh, questions, send me all your questions, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Um, as Hannah said, um, this, uh, the stuff I'm talking about will apply to commercial castings in the UK, um, which is where I'm based and where I, uh, where I work, where I live. Um, but I hope that uh, a lot of the stuff I talk about will be applicable um, wherever you are. Um, although I'm very aware that things may be different, in uh, different parts of the world and also certainly commercials feel different in for example america than to how they do say in bits of europe or bits of the uk anyway uh, let me talk about myself just as a kind of intro uh, not to blow my own trumpet but just to give a context so um i'm an actor i've been working for 20 years i um didn't go to drama school um but uh, got an agent off the back of a show i did at university and then for the last 20 years, I've been doing proper acting, <laughs> uh, what you might call proper acting in theatre, film and television, um, but also commercials. And I guess my first question would be, well, why do I do commercials? Why might you be interested in doing commercials? Well, because um, uh, I think and I hope I'm speaking for everybody when I say um, Nobody wants to be an actor, or very few people want to be an actor, purely to do commercials. I mean, we as actors, as performers, want to act in film, television, theatre, whatever it is. But, but commercials are out there, and commercials are filled in the main with actors, um, although maybe less so now than they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But um, actors are still needed to tell the stories for people to sell stuff. So why would you want to get involved in that? Well, um, <laughs> what have they given me? Well, quite simply, they've given me money. Um, and I think we all know 1%, 2% of actors are able to purely earn an income from their acting alone. And um, we've all got that side hustle, that job, that thing we do, that, uh, you know, jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing where you do voiceovers and... Uh, maybe audiobooks and you work in a pub and you work in this and you teach and you do that and all that sort of stuff and I I run casting sessions for casting directors as well but the actual doing commercials the thing I would say is it, it, it can for a day's work it can give you a silly amount of money now even if it's just a daily fee of uh, in the UK 350 400 pounds that would um, that's great for a day's work where you're driven to work and you're fed and they film you and you have some fun doing some acting. On top of that, there may be a buyout. Um, and again, I just say, if, if anything that I'm talking about does not make sense, please write in the little box there and um, uh, I'll try and go over it. I'll try and do it chronologically at the end of this of my chat here. But um, yeah. So um, money, for example, we're all in... Um, we're all in lockdown. I have no idea how I'm going to earn any money the last six months, but I do know I did a commercial earlier in the year, which will earn me through the buyout money that um, will take the heat off a bit. I'm a bit less terrified than I am already about the state of the world and how on earth I'm going to pay my mortgage and my, you know, food and all that sort of stuff or my rent or whatever it is. They can give you a lot of money, but not very much work a day's work, two days work. Um, I also believe they give you great camera skill and uh, working with a crew. Now, again, I think as actors, 
we want that opportunity to work. And if someone is paying you to work um, and to work with a camera crew who will be almost always proper, decent, maybe not film, although I've worked with DPs who've done big movies, um, uh, you've got a proper camera crew. You see how a crew works. You see how a set works. Because it's, uh, say, a 30-second commercial and they've got one day to film it, you get a lot of time. The production values often are very good, much better than if you're shooting a daytime soap or um, even a normal television scene. You know, let's say in a TV series, you shoot, what, four to eight pages a day. Daytime soap, you shoot 20 pages a day. Commercial, you've got 30 seconds, uh, say, and you have all day to do it. They're going to not rush it and that means you as a performer get to practice get to work get to work with the camera and as we all know working makes you feel good whether you're doing a student film or a um whatever it is working acting when they say action and you do the stuff and they say cut and then you have a look at it and they go ah oh, that that's good also um uh travel i've, I've traveled all over the world doing stuff. Um, a lot of the commercials I've done have been in, have been in Europe. I've, so I've, this year I've been to uh, two places in Europe, uh, I've been to uh, Prague and Bucharest. And in my career, I've gone to South Africa and not been to America, but I've been kind of all over Europe and stuff. And that is great because you get to travel and you get to feel um, it's, it's, it's just nice. <laughs> and um, work is good. And if it's work in a foreign country, you feel good about yourself. Um, uh, UK actors have tax bills sometimes. Um, very often a commercial has been the thing that has saved me, um, the buyout. Um, uh, so yeah, listen, some people are snobbish about them. I can talk about this right at the end when I talk about commercials as a career and how many you can do and whether it's right to do it. But I would argue particularly at this stage, um, the way we consume media, it's not like 10, 15 years ago where in the UK there are what, five terrestrial channels um, and people watching TV have to sit through all the adverts. Television isn't consumed like that anymore. And I would argue through talking to casting directors, but please, if anybody's on here who is a casting director and wants to correct me that... Um, Casting directors in the past might have gone, oh, so-and-so did that commercial. Are they a proper actor? I think um, and my feeling is that the, the mood generally has changed and there's less snobbishness around it as a thing. And even if there was, people aren't watching them because everyone's getting their TV on demand um, and skipping through the adverts, simple terms. Um, so how does it work? How do commercials get made? Okay, so um, my understanding is this, and again, this is through working and this is how somebody makes uh, Coca-Cola. So I'm, I make Coca-Cola and I hire an agency. Um, I, as Coca-Cola, I am a client and I hire an agency, um, advertising agency to make my commercial. They've all come in and pitched it. If you've ever watched Mad Men, it is like that. Agencies pitch to clients. And they say, yeah, you're the guy, you're the people we want to make this commercial. Uh, the agency will have a commercial in mind that has been pitched to them by a director. Um, once they've got the job, they'll then look for a casting director to find the people to make that advert. Um, and that's where we come in. So there is a um, casting. Um, so let's say you get a casting. And again, I uh, hope I'm talking to people who have been to a casting. If you haven't been to a casting, you get a phone call or more likely an email from your agent saying, hello, darling, 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 darling. Um, uh, tomorrow, 10 past two, it's for this. This is the brief. Um, often again, I'm referring to UK commercials. Um, I would want the brief and the, um, I want to say the brief, the thing that the casting director has put out a casting call and says, I need actors to be in this Coca-Cola commercial. I need a woman in her 40s who looks like this with blonde hair and I need a 
um, a kid who's uh, mixed race and I need a granddad. Um, this is the money, this is the deal. These, these are the, what the characters are doing. You might get a script, you might get the description. That email is then forwarded to you, darling, 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 can you go along at 10 past two to do this? You go to the casting. All the castings are recorded. They're sent to the director. The director picks the people he or she likes. Um, and again, it's a sad reflection of the world. I don't think I've ever done a commercial directed by a woman. Uh, yes, which is interesting, a reflection of society. Um, yes, we call it a breakdown here. Yes, yes. Um, I will, yes, questions, I'm getting distracted by questions, really. I will get to them. Um, so then you go in and you do your thing. You know, the tape sent to the director. The director says, uh, I like uh, him, him, him and her. They are then put on pencil, okay? Um, you then may have a recall um, or that pencil is then ultimately put to the client. Now I could bore you a lot with this. My advice to you would be, I've sent a link to Hannah who's hosting it here um, about a um, podcast called The 98%, which is for um, actors uh, like me, you, and everyone listening, who are not part of that 2% who can go, oh darling, I'm gonna do a film, I'm gonna do a bit of theatre. People who have to hustle for work. Um, with the casting director, Michael Cox, who um, with his friend Tom, Tom Hammond, Ron Hammond and Cox, he talks through in detail how the process works. Um, when you're on pencil, in the old days, it used to be that, um, uh, there we are, there's uh, Hannah uh, sending that out. It used to be that it would be you and three other people. Um, that's less the case now. If you're on pencil, it might be you and eight other people. And then they might bring in some more people. If there is a recall, you might go to the recall thinking, oh, I'm on pencil, I'm in here. And then you get there and there are um, a load of other people. Um, being selected. The reason for that is, is the directors, uh, again, we call it callback. Yes, callback or recall, yeah. Um, uh, the director's voice is listened to less now. Um, I had an experience just before we were locked down where um, it would have been so good to get this job. <laughs> Maybe somebody watching did get the job, in which case, um, good for you. Uh, where I was, my agent, yeah, I did a recall. Uh, the casting director who I know said, yeah, the director loves you. The director loves you, but then they we're going to go again. We're going to find someone different. We're going to look at different people. And basically, instead of white guys in their 40s, they were looking at uh, black guys in their 20s. Um, and in the end, it didn't go my way because so many people have an opinion and so many people have an input now. So what does that mean? It means um, it's a numbers game. Uh, and you have to get this in your head, the whole idea of getting a, um, getting a job and getting on pencil is a numbers game. Is it a lottery? Well, the lottery is a numbers game, but um, if in your head you can get yourself to a place where you can say, much as if you can apply it to acting, actually. Um, I can do what I can to get on pencil. And there are basic skills, which I will talk about in a minute, about how to maximize your chance of, of somebody going, yeah, you're the, you're the person who could, you're the person who is this Coca-Cola. I can see you doing this Coca-Cola commercial. Um, once you execute, I hate to use that word. It seems very kind of, um, macho i execute my skills once you once you know what you're doing and you act like a professional and you give yourself the best chance you have then you're on and you find yourself on pencil then it's up to somebody else and you have to let go um for example i don't go to all the castings in the world there are some again i'll talk about this later i wouldn't there are some castings i wouldn't go for um but last year i I had a lot of castings and I got about 20 pencils and I got three jobs. So that's like one in seven. Um, it's a numbers game and it's horrible. <laughs> mm. 
particularly when uh, you know the money involved. And again, I'll talk about this when you're in the room. If you know you're on pencil and it's a quote unquote life changing amount of money or a amount of money that will allow you to pay that tax bill or will allow you to fix the hole in the roof or will allow you to buy the childcare that you need in order to maybe do the play that you really want to do that you won't be able to do because who's going to look after your kids or who's going to do this or how are you going to feed yourself because it's a no budget play, you know, uh, no money play, but it's good for your career and for your soul. If you know it, that is hard when you know what the money is and you know you're on pencil, but you just have to get to, what do you exactly mean by a numbers game? I mean, uh, let's say there are 10 people and someone rolls a dice, you're number five. One in 10 times, your number will come up. Nine in 10, you won't. Um, but if you keep rolling the dice, eventually the number five will come up. That's what I mean by a numbers game. And in a way that you can have a mindset where you go, oh, that's really unfair. Well, yeah, I mean, acting is unfair. Uh, or rather, uh, if you're looking for fairness, you won't find it. Um, there are plenty of people, um, uh, we all know who are brilliant actors who don't get the opportunity they want. I'm really sorry. Oh no, someone's, someone's at the door and my, my wife's gonna get it. Um, okay, so hopefully I've covered that, but I'll go into that more. Um, we've just had a fridge delivered, girl. That's part of our lockdown. So hopefully that's gonna <laughs> get in the front door. Um, yes, so the casting. So you get to the casting um, and um, how do you do it? How do you go about it? Okay, these are my notes here. Look, there are notes. Um, and these are notes that I have typed up from notes that I normally run a session where I'll talk for 20, for 10 minutes, hopefully no more, and then I'll run, um, we'll run some commercials and I'll film you doing the casting. And then, um, and then we'll talk some more and I'll observe and I'll make notes and I'll say, think about this, think about that. If I was going to a casting, what would I do? Okay, so, um, get as much information as you can from your agent, particularly if there are things like dress code. For example, smart, casual, what the fuck does that mean? Well, I think it means if you're a man, don't wear jeans, uh, wear something like chinos. Don't go in wearing a t-shirt, wear a shirt with a collar, for example. Um, if you haven't got an email with uh, very specific instructions, um, it should be obvious, it's not just ask. Um, your outfit that you wear, don't wear logos. Don't walk into a casting with the word Nike across your chest or, you know, unless that's what they're after. Um, or, a, you know, Iron Maiden, or, you know, uh, or some death metal band or whatever in big letters. Same for stripes. Anything that a camera might find, stripes that go across, the camera doesn't like it. Um, use your head. I know, for example, blue is a good color for me. I look awful because I've got two kids and I'm homeschooling them and <laughs> I've got bags under my eyes, but I know what colors work for me. Blue, green. Um, I've got a beard at the moment because it's locked down. I, I um, again, ask your agent about that. Uh, something doesn't apply to women. I, I, if I was going for a casting now, I'd probably shave it off. Maybe two years ago, I'd keep the beard again your agent's opinion is more important than mine and is more valid than, than mine. Um, often in commercial casting studios, the backdrop is a certain color. So you might get a, either gray or blue. If you know the room, because you've been there before, you can, you can um, tailor that. I, I kind of wouldn't go in wearing white unless it's specifically asked for. I wouldn't go in wearing gray because often you have something behind but if something is blue if i'm wearing blue and i get in there and the background is blue i always have a second layer i'll have a cardigan that's brown or a cardigan that's green so if i get there and if for example the background's green i don't know why it would be then i can go oh shit i'm wearing a green cardigan i'll take that off you see what it means you, you have a choice of two you have two layers you can use um i i would then also if i got a recall wear the same outfit for the recall my agent has always said that um, 
anybody looking for books on how to have a career uh, as an actor should check out the Andy Nyman, A-N-D-Y, Nyman, N-Y-M-A-N, Golden Rules of Acting. There are two books, and in the second book, and it's the best five pounds or seven dollars you'll ever spend in your life. They're, they're really tips, 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 and, what, and he says very specifically, if you're going for a recall, and he means this particularly with film and TV auditions, wear what you wore the first time. It helps them go, oh, it's that guy. Yeah, I remember him. Rather than having to kind of work out who you are and then remember and then watch your performance. It, it speeds up the process by which you're in there, you're there in your, your field of vision. Um, yes, Andy, the, the name of the author is Andy, A-N-D-Y, Nyman, N-Y-M-A-N, and the books are called The Golden Rules of Acting. I'm sure somebody could find it right now on Amazon. There's two and put up the link there. Um, what if I don't have an agent? I'll get back to that. Um, sleep, stating the obvious, do not go out the night before and get really, really, really drunk. Uh, you look like shit. Do not uh, come in smelling of alcohol. Do not come in smelling of cigarettes. <laughs> um, there is a casting director called um, Kelly Valentine Hendry, um, who has been doing, I think, two o'clock every, um, uh, every uh, Friday, um, who uh, talks about kind of things not to do as a, um, as a, uh, um, sorry, I've just lost my screen, as, as, as a things to do, things not to do. And um, one of them is, yeah, don't come in reeking of booze and or cigarettes. Um, yes, uh, I, uh, again, if you drink too much coffee, some people go mad. If you don't drink coffee, then you can't function. Um, I use eye drops because um, your eyes are always the most important part of any audition, I would argue. Um, and yeah, you know how to make yourself look good or look appropriate. And that hopefully that stuff is kind of obvious. Um, read the script before you fill in the forms. Um, I, uh, I, when I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just uh, messing with my, uh, uh, um, I, uh, if you get there and there is a script to prepare and you've not seen it before, you might get it sent to you before. Uh, if not, um, you get there and you have to fill in forms saying, who you are, what your measurements are, and which is for, should you get the job, wardrobe would need to know that. And, um, and then uh, your agent's details, and are you able to fly, for example, do you have a valid passport, clean driving license, how old are you? If you're doing alcohol adverts in the UK, don't know what about the US, but if you're doing alcohol adverts in the UK, you have to be over the age of 25. Um, uh, and um, uh, yeah, fill those forms in bef uh, after you've read the script. If you're filling the forms in and suddenly they say, oh, oh, oh darling, come in, come in, come in, then you're not ready, then, then you're not ready. I mean, it sounds like an obvious thing to say. But, um, but I think, yeah, I've, I've done that before and gone, oh God, then you've got to go in and you've got to do all your stuff. So um, the next thing, the most important thing, in the UK, they call it an ident. In America, they call it a slate. Um, and this is a very, very important thing. I'm just, as you can tell, I um, I'm not familiar with Zoom, and my picture has suddenly gone. I've made it go very, very small, and I need to find a way of making it bigger again. So I apologise for that, and I've missed all the chat. I can't see all the chat. Hopefully, I'll be able to um, work that out in a second. Um, so idents. Okay, this is the first time that the director sees you in their life. So it's important. 
In the UK, it usually goes like this. You look straight down the barrel of the ca camera, kind of in this size frame, maybe a little bit wider. Um, so, yeah, uh, and, you, and you do this. You say your name and your agent. Sometimes you might say your name and your height. And then they ask for profiles. And then you do this. You look to one side and then you look to the other side. You don't at any point go around the back of your head, as far as I can tell, um, usually. Um, the trick I've learned, the trick that was taught to me 20 years ago, is, um, is this. Before I say that, this is a terrible ident, okay? When you can see in somebody's eyes that they are terrified, okay? Let me just, okay, so they do this, they go, Hi, I'm Finley Robertson and I'm with TCA. Hopefully, um, you can all see why that was terrible because you could see in the person's eyes, oh my God, I'm so terrified. If you meet somebody like that, you don't want to work with them. Oh my God, what's happening? No, I don't want to work with this person. The trick I learned um, and I'm, I don't know if it's going to work now, is to do this, is to look down the barrel of the lens, because it will be down the barrel of the camera, and um, imagine that there's somebody that you love, or somebody, whenever you see them, makes you laugh, or somebody, yeah, a, a friend or a loved one. And you look through and imagine they're six feet behind the camera as you say your name. Okay, so I'm going to try and do it now. You, you, you will ask for your name and your agent, and then you will give your profiles. Okay, so this is the first thing. I'm like, see if this, this will be better, hopefully. Hello, I'm uh, Finley Robertson, and I'm with TCA. Yeah. Okay, that is better, I think. I'm just going to try and find out where, the, uh, where these messages are. Um, cause I've completely made a Horlicks of this. I need to find, um, oh God, I need to find a way of, um, bringing you back to me. I'm going to unmute just to let you know. <laughs> so if you, hi, by the way. Hi. <laughs> so if you, um, if you like run your mouse along the bottom of the zoom screen. Yes. You'll it should pop up and it should. Oh, there we are. Up. I've got. Uh, Chat? no, I've got stop video, mute my audio, unpin video. Um, I'm in a very small, ah, gallery view. Hey, what does it do? There you go. You got him. Gotcha. There you're back. There you go. Okay. Uh -huh. Off I pop again. Goodbye. Um, yes. Right. Good. Okay. We're back. So please tell me just before you disappeared, did that look better for like this looking down the barrel and going, and imagining, imagining my five-year-old son, who's very cheeky and going, hi, uh, yeah, Finn Robertson, and I'm with TCA. So I'm smiling in my eyes, and I'm not going short focus. It did, there we are, thank you, but definitely better, good. Now, uh, the next trick I use is profiles. I just wanna see if like, you go like that, and you've got a hunchback, or you've got um, like, I don't know, a swastika tattooed on the back. Oh, look at that, that's sweat. Um, on the back of your neck, that's not going to help you. So profiles are, you know, on, in the commercial, you're going to be standing up, right? So you're going to be like that. And then want to see the other side. Do you have a funny ear? Is one ear like, do you play rugby and you've got cauliflower ears? The trick I do on the ident is to do this. I go, um, so as I swing round and I always, rehearse it, I go to the right every time. And then as you swing around, you just have a little look. It's trickier here because that's it there. That's the, that's the lens there. You just have a little look at the lens as you go around. So it's like, and I think I caught it there. The reason I do this is because that look over the shoulder or that look, that tiny, tiny look, is so much one of the tiny beats that's in so many commercials. And that look over the shoulder, that look at somebody can be so charismatic. Um, 
again, it's that look in the bar where you, you know, when you're, you're single and you see somebody and they look at you and it's like, oh. So I don't mean to do this. Don't do this. I don't think that, that works, although I have seen models do that um, because that's their shtick. But if you're an actor, just do this. Know where your feet are, so you don't have to go. I mean, you should be able to, and this is, again, this is something we can practice. We're all in lockdown. We can all practice with a recording ourselves doing idents. Um, name, agent, or name and height, profiles that way, that way, and then show your hands. Again, look at my hands. They're really ugly, but they don't, for example, have warts or a giant... <laughs> swastika or whatever tattooed on your hand um also the story i heard is that uh sort of 15 years ago 20 years ago somebody did a video game uh commercial and they hadn't done that and they got there on the day and they needed a shot of them operating the machine and they were missing a thumb so they had to use somebody else and it's a nightmare um should you turn only the head and a bit of your torso at home you can uh, I'm going to do that at the end. I'll go mad if I don't. So that's your ident, okay? Sometimes you have to hold up a piece of paper that has your name on that will have been written by the person on the outside. So, oh, Finley, hi, yeah, you're on the right, 175. And that's just some directors want that, some directors don't. The, th the trick thing that's tricky there is if you do that and then you have to show your hands, you get to the point where you're back here and then you go, oh, um, sorry. So the trick, imagine this has got my name on it. I go, yeah, uh, Finley Robertson, uh, Finley Robertson, blah, blah, blah. When you go there, drop it. And it's gone. Just drop it on the floor. Once you go to that side, drop it on the floor, it disappears. Eye dents are, they're the first time the director sees you. So it's really important to, um, to get it right. Right, we're flying through this team, well done. Um, <laughs> So I've got a thing here, camera technique in the room. Okay, so, and it's hard talking about that, this, uh, without scripts to play with. But as actors, you should know basic camera technique, okay? You should know that the most important part of your face on camera are these. The eyes are the windows of the souls. That's a cliche because it's true. Um, if you're driving a car and you're behind a big truck, you, there's a sticker on the back sometimes. That says, if you can't see my um, mirrors, I can't see you. And it's the same thing here. You've, um, they've got to see your eyes. This is particularly true um, if, for example, in the action, you do something when you're looking down and you've got to, let's say the, the thing is you're, you're looking at a bottle of beer or Coca-Cola and you're thinking, do I want to drink this? If I do this, the director can't really see what I'm doing. If I do this, now I'm holding it there, but I'm cheating my eye line. And again, ask the people in the room, what's the best eye line for that? If I'm looking, again, often sometimes you have to look at a TV screen and you say, where shall I put that? If my reaction, if I'm looking at somebody and my reaction is, to my wife walking in the door and she's really cross at me, oh dear, I'm in trouble, then you need to, um, you need to uh, know where they are. Okay, I'll just, I'll put them there and I'll put that person there, okay? Know the size of the frame. If in doubt, ask. Again, we need to remember as actors that casting directors are on our side. They want us to be good. They want to solve the problem of, who is going to do this job? Um, I would also say, regarding that blocking, sometimes the blocking can be tricky. Um, you've got to know as well whether very rarely do you do stuff down the barrel of the camera as part of the action, unless you've been sent a speech or a dialogue. Um, and I'm talking about this. You need to buy Coca-Cola. That's what you need to do, or whatever it is. Um, if there's dialogue, it will probably be to somebody off camera. There will very rarely be another actor in the room. You might go in twos, you might take it in turns. Again, use your common sense. 
work out what the size of the frame is. If the action is something and we're in this tight and you start doing this, then it's, it's not going to read. So just ask again. I just, when I've run sessions, I've just kind of despaired when people have just, just done all their stuff with the top of like, like this. And they just say, I can't see you. So cheat the eye lines. This is basic camera technique, but for some reason, um, people, uh, it sometimes goes out the window and you forget whatever nerves or whatever. Just remember that. Um, here's my thing. Okay. Uh, I think it's really important in commercial casting, but also in screen acting in general is we've got to see the thoughts in your head. And often it's the change. The secret of every, of any dramatic scene is change and conflict in adverts less so because you want to feel good about Coca-Cola. So why should there be conflict? But change is that moment where you have the thought and you go, Oh yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to drink that. And then you're miming drinking it. And then you're thinking, Wow, that tastes good. It's cheese on toast sometimes. And it feels, when I say cheese on toast, it can feel like it's the worst acting in the world. But use your imagination and make it real. Um, hi, Sarah L in London. You've just popped up on my screen. Hi. I don't know why. Um, so uh, your eyes and the changes that come in your face are what a director is looking for and can also demonstrate that you can act. Um, yeah, I hope that's obvious. I'll go through questions at the end, but that, so that bit where you're thinking one thing, one thing, and my thing is I'll be looking at one thing and then I'll go. So yeah, I'm looking at something. I look away a fraction, I realize. And then when I look back, I'm going, oh yeah. I do want her to buy me a Coca-Cola. Again, please, this is the worst acting in the world ever, but is an example of your eyes telling the story. Let your eyes be the thing that, that's your biggest weapon. Because commercials are not three page dialogue scenes. They're a story told in 15 seconds, 30 seconds. We, you need to have an open face and open eyes so the director can say, ah, this person is telling me the story, often without dialogue. A lot of the work I do, a lot of um, European commercials, they use British actors. Why? Because, rightly or wrongly, they believe British actors are better. And, um, and often the commercials, as a result, don't have... A lot of, I have done things where I've had to speak German and that's been a disaster. But, um, but yeah, that, uh, that is um, the eyes and using your imagination. If you see it, the camera thinks it is my basic tip for life with regard to screen acting, okay? Or the, ca or the camera sees something. And again, going back to a numbers game and the idea of it being a lottery, that's all you can do in the room to get on pencil. And they might see this face and the director, for whatever reason, might go, this face is not the face that I see in my Coca-Cola commercial. But I can't control that. It might be because I look like the kid who bullied him at school or I look like a ex-boyfriend <laughs> that he had that, you know, was horrible. I can't control that. All I can do is put my, give myself the best opportunity to put myself on pencil so that somebody can say, yeah, this guy can act. And he looks kind of interesting. We'll get him to shave his beard. Okay, fine. We can maybe do it with his hair. We could dye his hair. Yeah, okay, great. And again, like all these things, casting, we need as actors to know so much of it is stuff we can't control. Whether it's a TV show or a commercial, we've already got somebody who we know is going to do it, who's got blonde hair. So we can't have another white guy with blonde hair. We need um, a white guy with, with black hair, or we need uh, an Asian guy, or actually we've got three. We need, we, this is two white, we need some, we need to mix up 
um, races here. It's all too white, 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 or it's all, you know, whatever. So I can't control that. All you can control is what you do in the room. And usually you'll get one go at it and then you'll get a note and you'll do it again. Um, listen to the note. <laughs> again, this is Kelly Valentine Hendry. Somebody asked me in the back, is that is, is in, in, in acting, uh, in, in, in drama auditions, the actual go, yeah, yeah. And then have not taken on board the note. Listen to the note. Castings are run either by casting directors or their assistants or actors who, who are doing it because they're good at commercials and the casting director trusts them. When I've run them, I give very good notes to try and get somebody to play it better. Listen to the note, take the note, play the note. And then, um, and then walk out the room. I hope that's enough at this stage on what you do in the room. I hope I've not missed out anything obvious. I will scroll through everything and answer as many questions as possible. Um, yeah, but it's basically, let's see your face, let's see your eyes and think about it as storytelling in the smallest amount of time possible. Um, my rule is, uh, I don't really say normally less is more. I think that is misguided for acting on camera in general, um, because if it's rooted in truth, you can be as big as you like is my theory. In commercials, I think it is important. I think people need to, need to put on top of you their vision of what their story will be. And if you're being quite big in your performance and how you're pitching it, I think that can be harder for them. I hope that makes sense. Um, let them have the opportunity to give you their story. And if you're really pushing it, I mean, it's not true for every script, but a lot of the work I get, I downplay, I put a twinkle in the eye and I make it work like that for a lot of the scripts I do. That's just me. And that is, um, that, that I think would be something to, to think about how you're pitching the performance. Um, would you take a prop that hints to the role? No. If you are, if you need props, they'll do it in the room and it'll be stuff they find around the room. Um, don't worry about that. Right, let's say, oh yeah, and if you get a recall, wear the same clothes. If you're being recalled with somebody else um, and you're both up for the same role or it's a commercial with two people in it, or maybe more. I had a recall once for a really big whiskey commercial that would have paid loads of money. And I got in the room and there were four of us and we were each gonna have a go. There were four setups, four little scenes and each of our, each of our goes were gonna be, we were the leading person in that scene. And then the other three were supporting and it was improvised again, which is a nightmare. Um, and, and, and encourages what I'm about to talk about. If you're doing a recall, do not be a dick. Do not think that you, by being really big and like trampling over everybody else in terms of your improvisation, that you are going to get the job. Trust me, directors can see and know those people and go, I do not want to work with this person. Um, and I did this recall and there was a guy there and he just trampled over everybody um in the improvisation we know how to improvise be kind give things get something back play don't be a dick and he was a dick and he didn't get it i didn't get it and um yeah there we are be kind if 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 you make the other person look good you'll look good and that's a rule for acting in general but i think also in commercials if they're looking for more than one person they're looking for a team not two individuals, both of whom are funny. I hope that is, makes sense. Okay, you're on pencil. 
and ta-da, you've got the job. Hooray. Um, how are we doing? God, I've been talking for hours. Um, read the contract. Whether you do that before the casting or not, um, it's important. If for whatever reason you don't want to do it because of what it is, where it will be shown, how long it will be shown for. I was um, on pencil recently for something that when I'd gone, once I'd gone to the, the, the casting and read the script properly, stuff that wasn't sent to me, I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't think I feel comfortable about doing it. Um, know what you're getting yourself in for. How much money? If you go into the room and you're thinking, oh my God, this is 30,000 pounds, 50,000 US dollars. Hide that. Don't be going, hi, I'm Finley Robertson and I'd really like 50,000. I mean, I'm with uh, T TCA. That's going to come across and that can freak you out. You've got to let that go, park that. Or tell your agent, if you have an agent, not to tell you how much it's worth. Um, the mechanics of a shoot. How does it work on set? I'm hopefully going to be talking to people who've been on a set before. Um, it's like any other film shoot. You need to be professional. You need to turn up on time. Just because there's lots of money going around, don't be a dick. Don't, be, don't get pissed the night before. Get really drunk and and um, look like crap. Um, people have been thrown off commercials. The 118 uh, <coughs> guys, I don't know if in the, if you, in the UK, 118 was a commercial and there was one guy who did them all, a guy called Colin, and there were various other guys who uh, disappeared for various reasons, a few of which were in their control and they kind of messed it up. Um, yeah. Um, if you are filming abroad, and again, I don't know in terms of experience, sometimes if it's a, if it's a shoot abroad, um, you'll fly, you'll go straight from the airport to a costume fitting where they'll take lots of photos of you. They'll then show these photos to the clients who will decide on the next day, he's gonna wear blue and she's gonna wear green. Um, the following day you will shoot, and then maybe you'll go home the day after that, however long the shoot is you will be given per diems, which is living expenses. Make sure you get those as soon as possible. Make sure your agent has told you um, what they are and how much you should be getting. Record your hours. This is true of acting in general, but particularly for commercials. At the end of the job, have a record of what time you were picked up, particularly if you're abroad, what time you were picked up from the hotel or wherever, your home, um, but let's say you're abroad, your hotel, to what time you get to set? Did you get a lunch break? Was it an hour? And when you wrapped, when you finished shooting, and when you went back to the hotel? I did a job in Poland about three years ago and it was with a child. So if you're working with kid actors, they can work four hours and they have to serve a certain amount of break and then they can work again. Some of the stuff was at night. As a result, I was sitting around for a lot of the time, but I kept a record of all my hours. And as a result of that, my agent was able to work out my overtime. And I got paid more in overtime than I did for the buyout. And if I hadn't written down my hours or hadn't made a note of when I was picked up, you, um, uh, I wouldn't be able to get that money. Write everything down. Um, if you use your own costume, in the UK at least, you get a bit of extra money. Let your agent know. I did a, again, I did a job and they really liked the tie that I wore in the audition. I brought the tie or I did a thing where I, had my, I, I wore my glasses, um, my real glasses, my home glasses, um, and I wore a suit. Um, travel. If, again, this is, applies if you're going to an airport, you should have a cab that picks you up. If you don't have a cab or you don't want a cab, it should be in the budget. I, um, I have to give a receipt now for, for any cabs I book, but I, um, before I had to do that, I would, uh, I live on, near the Piccadilly line. For those of you in the UK, that's a underground line that goes basically from my house to Heathrow Airport. It takes about an hour and a half. So I would get that and then I would get 50 pounds fee for a taxi. 
you're allowed to do that. Um, and it's cheaper. And I got to watch, you know, all the shows I downloaded on my iPad. Um, again, if you're filming abroad and the production company is abroad, the people, the, the, the agency have hired, a, this is something I didn't, the agency hire then a film company to make it. If the production company who are hiring all the, all the equipment and the location and everything, if they're abroad, in your contract for adverts, wherever, they're, if, they're, if they're made by a company abroad, there'll be your fee plus an agent's 20%. Again, read the contract. About 20 years ago, <laughs> longer, I was with an agency and for my commercials, for any commercials I did, they took 17.5%. What I didn't know was that a lot of these commercials were made by companies abroad. Um, so the agency's fee was already on top of that. So they were taking two fees. If that happens to you, don't be in that position. I only realized too late, I couldn't claim it back. Read the contract. Get your rate, Mike kept saying, oh, can I see the contract? Oh, darling, no, 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 no. It was only much later that I realized and it was too late to go back. The agency had folded anyway. I hope that makes sense. I will go through it again. If you're filming in, again, people in America, it might not apply to that, but this is again, the UK perspective. If you're filming, an advert for the UK that's shot in the UK, it will have a UK production company. Sometimes if you're filming um, a commercial for Germany and it's filmed in Germany or Portugal, they may still use the production company in London. That happened to me. Um, a radical media or a, um, a, 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 an advertising agency and they have an office in Berlin and they also have an office in London and wherever, but they deliberately did it out of the office in London, so they, they had to, they, they paid less. Hope that makes sense. Um, on set, the three people you need to know, in my opinion. The DP, the director of photography, they are the person that makes you look nice. <laughs> the director, obviously, they're the person that's given you the job and may well be directing you, although a lot of time directors, particularly advertising directors, don't know how to direct actors. That's where you have to kind of think on your feet and be savvy and smart and go, what they're trying to get me to do is this, okay? And just get it done. And the first AD, the first assistant director, say hello and introduce yourself to all these people. Again, don't be a dick. These are the three golden rules of acting. Andy Nyman talks about it. Be on time, know your lines, do your work, and don't be a dick. Never think that you're more important than anybody else um yeah is the client your friend the client is the person making um the product and on the on the shoot they will be in a separate section their video village they will be um you'll be shooting your stuff over here and the producer of the commercial will be shuttling between the client and the film crew saying, well, a client like that, um, but they want to see one where you're a bit smilier with ideas. And the director and the producer will be going, tearing their hair out, going, oh God, that's never good. Been. Okay, let's just do that one for them, fine. They can be tricky people, the clients, but they can also be really lovely. And again, be nice, but don't be alarmed if they're a bit standoffish. Again, I did a, a car ad with a very well-known uh, supermodel from the 90s. She's still very well-known, but she mainly in the 1990s and early 2000s. And uh, the client were like, yeah, they were all men of a certain age who were really excited to be working with this person. And um, as a result, when I tried to be friendly to them, I was the least important person in the room and they made me feel like shit. Don't take it personally, it doesn't matter. Um, but you know, if you want to make friends with them, great. Um, I might, this make this is weird. I've been talking to myself for about an hour. I hope this is making sense. We're nearly next. What next? If the commercial 
runs for a certain period of time, that'll be part of the deal. You'll be paid a, a daily fee for your day's filming, which in the UK or about might be 350 pounds, 400 pounds, and then there'll be a buyout. In the old days, it used to be done on number of repeats and you would get a little bit of money here and there. Now it's a big lump sum. If the advert is renewed later, that lump sum will be play, paid again, plus an extra 10%. Again, it's in your interests if you know somebody who lives in what the territory where this commercial is being uh, shown to, make, to, say, to have them tell you, oh my God, that advert you did, that's back. You can email your agent and then they can email the production and they'll say, oh yes, yeah, sorry, we forgot to say, yes, we have renewed it. Here's your X amount of pounds. Um, that's something to bear in mind, particularly at the moment, a lot of actors who've done commercials, me included, are praying that because stuff isn't being made at the moment, old adverts will be renewed. That would be really, really great. Um, copies for your reel. In the UK in general, again, Kelly Valentine Hendry says, no montage at the start of your show reel, okay? However, because of the production values and because of various things, it might be quite nice to put it in your show reel. So keep your call sheet. Be friends with the producer. So the producer can say, so you can say, could you send me a link to that? Or even the director. I've had directors send me director's cuts of the commercial. Beautiful film, beautifully shot, beautifully put together. 90 second film that I've used. And I think it's always good to have somewhere on your hard drive or somewhere um, you, the stuff that you've shot, have it there. Um, conflicting adverts. Sometimes you'll go in and they'll say, have you blah, 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 name it, do you have a valid passport? Yes, drive license, blah, blah, blah. Have you done any conflicting adverts? Um, that's something to talk to your agent about. I couldn't comment beyond saying that I'm, uh, it's one of those things where you leave it with your agent. Uh, often you'll have a, um, a form you fill out, list all the commercials you've done in the last three years. I never fill that in. I don't think they need to see what a good commercial actor I am to give me the job. They've got the audition and that's it. They're not going to look at two people who they both think are good on tape and go, but this guy's worked a lot more on camera, blah, blah. No, they'll go, who's best? Um, I just leave that blank. Or if you're desperate, I would say C agent. Um, conflicting adverts. Listen, my, I've heard tale of uh, somebody who did two car adverts within nine months or a year and um, they didn't say, didn't get found out. The person who got the job was used as a reference as part of the casting process. Um, and there was no problem. I mean, if you get there and they realize that six months ago you did a, another car ad, what are they going to do? They're going to get another actor. They might get another actor, but you know, chances are they won't. But listen, that's off the record. I don't know. I think that's a thing where you should always take advice from your agent. Um, your agent might not put you up for stuff. And also, if you, as a result of that, you end up piss, pissing off a casting director, then yeah, maybe it's not worth it. A note on casting directors. Um, the more time you get on pencil, the more times they know you're good the more times they'll call you in again, um, stating the obvious. If you're good, if you're on time, you're good, and you don't come in reeking of booze and, and you're a nice person, they'll call you again. Anytime that brief comes out that fits you, oh, he could do that. Oh yeah, he came in, he was on pencil for that thing. Yeah, he's great. That's hopefully an obvious thing. Good auditions, having a good reputation um, helps you. And it's definitely helped me. There are casting directors who call me in all the time because they know I can do it. And even if I'm not right, they might want to show me to the director just in case. Um, commercials as a career is my last thing. Um, yeah, I know, 
I know at least one actor who's done very well for himself just doing commercials. Um, and he started out as an actor. He's not a model who's also uh, an actor. He is genuinely uh, an actor. And he just does commercials. And he's got, um, <laughs> he's got some very nice cars. Uh, so lucky him. I mean, it, it's up to you. Um, it can be a bit soul destroying. I've, I, 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 I had a look at a thing and someone said it was embarrassing. Yeah, I, can, I have all my tales about it being embarrassing. Um, uh, and some people don't ever want that because they feel humiliated acting out of what they would describe as a kind of crappy little scene. Okay, fine, then don't do them. Don't ever go to the room and then feel like you're too good to be in the room or that you are, you know, this is beneath you because that makes you a dick. Um, uh, my the horror story I tell is <laughs> going to see doing a Spec Savers, which is for those in America is a, a glasses company, and uh, it, the director was in the room, which was unusual for the first level of the casting, and he was the son is the son of a very famous film director. You can leave that to it. And um, the brief was, uh, yeah, you're walking around. And you, 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 uh, you're looking like spies. And I was like, what is, this? I didn't I really understand. And I walked in the room and then I said, so, um, uh, oh, uh, just, uh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're spies. Okay. Um, what do you, when you say, how do you want to, what do you want me to do? Is just do it. <laughs> and I, was, I found myself doing forward roles and like hiding behind things, doing load of bollocks. Of course I didn't get it. And he's a dick and whatever. We've all had bad experiences, but would that stop me going to commercials? Probably not, because um, cause if I didn't do commercials, I couldn't have a career as an actor. I guess that's, that's the, the thing I say. I don't, I don't know how I, could, how I could function as a performer. Um, so that's why I think that, that's why I think that. And also, again, anything where you meet more people in the industry, more casting directors who, lots of commercial casting directors, also do other stuff as well. Nina Gold still does commercials. Um, Sasha Robertson in the UK does commercials, but also does um, movies. Des Hamilton uh, does commercials. So yeah, there's no reason in my opinion not to do them. And now I'm gonna stop talking and scroll through these questions and hopefully this won't take forever. And it's weird doing a chat here and not having any immediate feedback. Um, okay, so I'm going from the stop. Andre Nobre, hello. Okay, good. Here, I'm gonna go through all these things. Uh, first, what are the first, first questions? Where are we, where are we? Any questions, now's the time, if anything. Okay, so the questions that have been going so far, um, but now get a question in, because what time is it? It's 10 past one. I've probably got another 25 minutes and then I have to have some Lunch, because I'm starving. Um, oh, one you missed. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, why are commercial auditions always super short notice? Yeah, it sucks. Because the people who make them, unfortunately, uh, we're just a piece in a jigsaw. It's not going to change. And again, you might be on pencil and, they, and you still haven't heard because the commercial and the commercial, you're, you've got to film it in two days time. How do you cancel your work? And the answer is, I think it's because we are, we're just a cog in a machine and it's shitty that we are the most important thing, but, but they forget that we have lives, jobs, children, childcare, other jobs. Um, it's crap. We call it right down here. Yeah, podcast, we call it callback. Yeah, headshots such as nurse, cop, cool teen. Uh, no, general headshot, uh, Emma J, general headshot. Don't do a shot, no, G general headshot. And I, I have, the whole thing about headshots is I have, oh, hello, Hannah. Hi. I just thought, you know, we, we had some really great questions earlier. So oh. I thought I'd jump in and- Do you want to jump in? Okay. Way through. <laughs> So okay, carry on with what you were just about to say there. Okay, fine. Um, no, I have, a, I have a photo, I have an acting photo where I'm like, I'm a serious actor. And then I have one where I'm smiling, which my agent sometimes uses for commercial castings. Again, 
if you have an agent, they will be able to decide which photo is best for you to submit for which job. Um, but I would never have photos of you dressed as a cop in ca just in case the, the thing is a cop. They, they can use their imagination. Uh, numbers game, I answered that. How do you, how do you get involved in the commercial? If you're a kid, um, get a kid agency, I guess. What if I don't have an agent? You, um, I would make a sh short film or a hustle to get a showreel and send it to uh, agencies who, um, who make commercials. You can find them on Twitter, uh, use the internet and hustle. Um, I wonder if I should wear the same things as I think, oh, maybe I should look another way so they can see my different. No, wear the same thing, Emma J, for your recall so they, they can quickly identify who you are. Uh, who's been doing the chats on a Friday? The casting director, Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, new word, Valentine, new word, Hendry, H-E-N-D-L-Y. Um, find her on Twitter. But should you treat auditions similar to headshots? with minimal makeup, uh, ask your agent, um, go inappropriate. I wouldn't wear too much makeup, <laughs> but I'm a man. Um, uh, um, but yeah, yeah, don't let the makeup be the thing that identifies you, let it be the acting. Um, I'm just scrolling through. Oh, that's me doing the ident. Should you turn only the head and a bit of your torso? Uh, yeah, I kind of, I've seen that done with models. I think it, for me, it feels a bit affected. Like you do this. Like you're so cool, you know, I'm only gonna turn a few bits of my body. For me, it's just, that just feels natural and normal. Um, is it okay to pick up the paper? I think once the paper has fallen on the floor, it's gone. When they cut at the end of the eye dent, that's when you get rid of it. What, what should we exactly say to who in the room when we are asking? There'll be a casting, assistant or the director asking you the questions and you shouldn't look at them look down the barrel of the camera because the director is watching that tape and you're talking to them uh recently when auditioning for commercials in particular i felt quite vulnerable and embarrassed do you have any advice on how to develop confidence um breathe in your belly so instead of breathing up here breathe in your belly and walk into the room as if you're about to go on stage for some stand-up like, come on, let's go, here we go. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Have that about you. Don't walk into the room going, oh, oh gosh, do I deserve to be here? Yes, you do. If you've got a casting, you've already, you're, you've already been picked. Somebody has said, I wanna see this person. They could do this job. That should make you feel good. There's plenty of people who don't get any castings and their agents put them up for stuff all the time. Um, sometimes I feel intimidated by other contestants um, well, don't. Sorry, I mean that, you know, that's a kind of self-help thing, but, but don't. They'll be doing something uh, and you're doing your thing and you can't do what other people do. You can only be yourself in the best way that you can be. And you both deserve to be in the room. And there's no point second guessing what they're looking for. That would be something I would say. Should people with glasses invest in contact lenses? I would take your glass. I would ask the person in the room. I would never do the action of a casting in your glasses. If, as a result, you're taking off your glasses, you can't see, yes, contact lenses. But I wear glasses to see in the distance. Sometimes if I have to read something, if there's a lot of text, which if you can't learn, and you've got like what's called an idiot board, yeah. If it's a text-heavy casting, uh, I, would, I would put contacts in, because they might put a board up there that allows you to read it. Um, what do you mean by pencil? That means the director thinks you could do it and then has to show you to everybody else. For commercials, I'm always worried about overacting. Is it better to play the truth or to be open? I think they're the same thing, truth and being open. I think overacting comes out when you're embarrassed or you don't know what you're doing. Um, if in doubt, play it smaller and then they can ask for it bigger. Um, oh, in the US, you call it hold. Oh, nice, great, okay, cool. Uh, what do the actors you see generally need to be more expressive or more subtle? It depends on the job, but more often than not, I tell people to be, to be smaller than, than bigger. Um, and I think personally, 
it's easier to get bigger than smaller in um, in these in these in this situation. Uh, props, no, it's recommended not to drink too much coffee. Uh, I mean, that's up to you. Other advice for looking your best? I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know. Don't smoke cigarettes. Do you get an advice for someone who's struggling to get in the original with casting directors? I would send your stuff. Find out as well who casts stuff. That's your in. Oh, I, and that'll be on their website, hopefully. I saw this. I love this. Here's my, I'd love to have been seen for that. Here's my reel. Are more auditions being done by self-tapes? Yes. Uh, and not just because of COVID. I hate doing self-tapes for commercial castings. And actually, as a rule, don't do them. But, um, but yeah, that, you know, I understand that they are on the increase. What if you don't have an agent? You have to hustle. What are some of the red flags in terms of contracts? Uh, I don't know. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know any red, there's no red flags. It's just knowing how long, oh, it's going to be two years and it's for 2000 pounds worldwide for two years. Nah, I'm better than that. Or you might really need 2000 pounds. So you go and do it. Um, in the all union, all, all, okay, there you go. Interesting. It's in the US, all union has 28 agency. Include non -union okay, blah, blah. Always read the contract. Yes. Uh, it's about agency. What's a buyout is they say we can show it for as many times as we like and we'll pay you X amount of pounds. So for one year, we can show it as much as we like. And instead of counting up how many times and paying you like they did 30 years ago, a percentage of the daily fee, however many times they show it 3000 times times 1% of your daily fee, that's 6,000 pounds. They just say, we're not gonna bother counting, but we'll just give you 20,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds or 3,000 pounds. How important is the actor's resume in the casting process? Uh, not at all. I would say it's your reputation and what you look like. Again, if, you, if casting directors know you're good, you have more chance of getting in a room. And again, the way it works is, casting directors send out a breakdown and then agents submit. And if your name, if your face looks right or the agency looks right, then you will get picked. Um, it's your face. How do you know you have the right agent or a bad agent? I think you, oh God, how much work you get, how much opportunity. How do you deal with crying at auditions? I guess an acting thing. I'm, I'm not sure you just make it work. That feels like an acting thing rather you should have gone spectators. Yeah, thanks. Uh, bye, yeah, bye, uh, Melang, it means eyeglasses. Um, and recently, you mentioned agents numerous times. Whatever, well, I don't have an agent. I've done that recently when I was vulnerable and embarrassed. Done that. Um, spotlight available to foreign. I should, spotlights, no, it's not. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. If you want to go on Spotlight, talk to Spotlight. Theatre auditions, I'm not talking about that. Transgender actor, again, I'm not the right person to talk about that. Um, can you speak about your experience getting your first agent, getting a show, getting a play, make a short film? Send it to people. Um, when should I get an agent? As soon as possible. Thanks, Finley. How do the pencils and guys taking out their jobs? Uh, pencils with other jobs, it's a nightmare. You just let your agent know. If you have an acting agent and a commercial agent, let them both know. And then let, it's your agent's, that's, your, that's what you pay your agent the commission for, to sort that shit out. It's not your job to go, oh, you're on two pencils. This one's more money. This one's less money. The dates conflict. That's your agent's job, not yours. What makes the difference between who books and who doesn't? Hopefully the entire, everything I've been talking about is the answer to that question. Sorry, Daniel, but yeah, hopefully if you recorded this or somebody's recording this, it's obvious. Do you have advice for someone who is just getting into acting? So I, um, uh, read books, watch television, watch films, work out why you love acting and why you want to do it. Don't do it for the money because it's not worth it. <laughs> Younger you who wanted to be an actor years ago, that's Priscilla. Um, what would you tell the younger you who wanted to be an actor years ago? Uh, treat it like a business. Um, don't be a dick. What do you mean by hustle if you don't have an agent? Well, if you don't have an agent, you have to hustle. You have to find ins and opportunities for people to see your work or for you to get seen for work. Um, write to people you know who've made stuff you like telling them that you're a fan and telling them who you are and where they can see you. Can you add links of commercials you've been in on your online resume? Or is it a copyright issue? No, it's not a copyright issue at all. In perpetuity is a massive red flag. Yes. 
correct. Is it better to get an agency for kids if you're a teen or just a normal agency? I'm the wrong person to ask that. Don't know. Uh, why might an agent not tell you the fee when they send it? They might, an agent might not tell you the fee when sending you the casting details because they know that if you know it's for £40,000, you're going to freak out. That's, I guess. Do you recommend having a part-time job as well? Well, if you're able to not have a part-time job, don't have a part-time job and spend the whole day going to classes and doing yoga and um, getting fit. But yeah, I think we all need to work. Uh, would you avoid auditioning for jobs that have conflicting shoot dates? No, because you don't know which one you're going to get. How much experience do you need to get an agent? None at all. You just need to be good and somebody will hire you. Thank you. Elizabeth Tudor's iPad. Right. I think that's it. Am I done? I don't think I, any more questions. Oh, hi. Hello. It's me again. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. That was like the quickest fire through um, a ton of questions I've ever seen. It was really, really good. Thank you for today. Was it, um, was it okay though? I mean, does everybody have any more questions? Oh wait, no. Uh, Perry Kurtz says, don't I? Perry Kurtz has a question. Um, listen, if you do have any, Hannah, is it okay to say this? If, if, is that a dog on that beanbag behind you? That is my dog, yeah. Dog. What's your dog called? He's called Teddy. Teddy! Teddy. Hi, Teddy. He's back to sleep. He's actually he doesn't doing care. it. The meeting um, home, if, so. if people have questions that are decent questions, they could send it to you and I could try and answer. I'm, that's fine. Absolutely. Emily Kim, so. okay. Where is the question from? Oh, how do I get an agent? Uh, you just, again, um, you just got to hustle. Ideal length for a showreel, four minutes? I don't know. There are questions here that I think people better than me can answer. Who was it? Said Perry Kurtz. Where, have you put your question up yet? Yes. I'm a comedian. When I walk in a room, I am funny right away. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Should I play that down? Um, I don't know. If, yeah. if No. <laughs> funny equals charisma. That's great. Yeah, definitely. I am an actor and I'm really handsome. Whenever I walk into a room, it's a real nightmare because everybody falls in love with me. Should right. I tell? Yeah, just be yourself. Just be yourself. Right. Um, I gotta go, I've got to have some lunch. Is that okay. good? Thank you very much. Um, just to let everybody know, so we've been recording the session today and it will be reshared. Yes, nice face, Finley. Um, so it'll be reshared. We're probably going to do a summary article. So if you want to come back to this at any point, if there's any notes that you missed, someone's just said, love your dog. Thanks so much. It's all I'm bringing to the party. Um, then it'll get, get reposted and you'll be able to come back to it. If you do have any questions, you can shoot them over to me. Um, I'm hannah.williams at backstage.com. And if I don't know the answer or if it's something specifically for Finley, then I will um, I will speak with him and come back to you. Um, we've got, uh, for the rest of the day now, we've got a ton of amazing stuff going on. So we've got a talk about cleaning up your social media, um, a chat with Tony winning theatre producer Ken Davenport, um, an actress from Jagged Little Pill will also be doing a Q&A on Instagram. Um, and then we've got a Q&A on YouTube Live this evening, UK time, um, afternoon for LA, um, and afternoon for, uh, for, the, for New York as well. Um, just have a look on our slate on, on the website and the, the timings are up there, but that's with Digital Dogs Casting. And that's just today. So um, throughout the week, we've got at least four things going on and they're all on different topics. So um, have a look through, see which ones uh, tickle your fancy and have a look and it's all free for everyone. So um, I hope this has been helpful and um, thank you, Finley. Cheers, Welcome. everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Thank Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>